classical in the case of management theory refers to the first significant period when management was studied and theories presented. The earliest studies of management were arguably in the first quarter of the 20th century. However, to understand what these theories were and how they came about, we will first need to explore the cottage industry and industrial revolution that came beforehand. In a classic cottage industry, a farm would sell the cotton, linen or wool to many other cottages, who would then spin it into yarn, use a loom to create fabric out of the yarn, then cut and sew the fabric into clothing. If they needed buttons etc, they could buy them from another cottage that produced buttons. Little investment was required to start up and few people if any were employed. The Industrial Revolution which started in Great Britain marked a major turning point in history and the demise of the cottage industry. The period witnessed a number of technological innovations and the introduction of new manufacturing processes from hand production methods to machines. From a business perspective a key introduction during this period was the factory to produce goods. This was dependent upon labour for operation and the workers did not own a significant share or often any of the enterprise. They were paid daily wages. Breaking production down into stages and using machines, factories were less reliant on skilled artisans, utilising unskilled labour instead. Workers and machines were brought together in a central factory complex, specially designed to handle the machinery and flow of materials. Components were made to standard specifications. Factories produced products on a much larger scale, enabling them to benefit from economies of scale and therefore reduce costs. 18th century factories produced cotton, silk and textiles, iron, brass, cement, glass, paper and various chemicals etc. Developments during and after the Industrial Revolution presented a number of challenges for business owners in particular. The new, larger and more complex organisations would need managing. They had to find ways to reduce costs and improve the efficiency of their business. This not only involved consideration of the use of technology and machinery, but also people, the workers. There was a need to ensure they were productive. Like the positive scientists before them, during the classical period, business owners, practicing managers and business academics or social scientists searched for principles, that's laws of management, and the best way to administer and run their organisations. Three prominent contributors to classical management theory were Henry Fayol, Frederick Taylor and Max Weber. 
Despite writing around the same time, each of the three men approached their understanding of management from different perspectives. Henry Fayol published his major work on management in 1916. He outlined key management activities. He stated that to manage is to forecast and plan, to organise, to command, to coordinate and to control. He also listed 14 principles of management. Fayol was arguably the first to achieve a genuine theory of management. Frederick Taylor was also one of the early practical manager theorists from a similar period. He focused on the problems of achieving greater efficiency on the shop floor. Experience both as a worker and as a manager had convinced him that few if any workers placed more than the minimal effort in their daily work. Weber was an academic and sociologist, not a practicing manager. His interest in organisations was from the point of view of their authority structures. It was in his publications that the term bureaucracy was used to describe a rational form of organisation. Bureaucracy is an organisational form with certain dominant characteristics such as hierarchy of authority, a system of rules and the specialisation of work. Taylorism paved the way for Fordism, the reorganisation of the entire productive process by the moving assembly line. Fordism is associated with the manufacture of standardised, low-cost goods in huge volumes, which could be afforded by customers as well as the workers who built them. To summarise then, classical management refers to a collection of management theories arising from the work of people like Fayol, Taylor and Weber in the first quarter of the 20th century. Such theories were driven by challenges arising from the Industrial Revolution, which brought new ways of working. Throughout the first half of the 20th century, various scholars developed and added to this body of knowledge. However, it's important to recognise that the classical school 
essentially pursued a set of management laws and one best way to manage. Their focus was more directed at work and efficiency rather than the worker.